Let me tell you a story. Let us begin today, brothers and sisters, in the year 1923. 1923. In Rome, Italy. Let us travel back to one of the great libraries at the Vatican. In 1923, an 18-year-old young man is said to have been studying there at that time when he says he found several obscure Hebrew and Aramaic texts. T-E-X-T-S. Texts. Aramaic, A-R-A-M-A-I-C. Aramaic comes to us from Aram, A-R-A-M, which was an ancient city mentioned in the Bible located in present-day central Syria. And this region is considered the linguistic epicenter of the Aramaic language, spoken there since the Bronze Age, which dates back to 3500 BC. Aramaic was spoken by settlers of that area called the Arameans, or the Arameans. And the name Aram is used as a proper name for several people in the Hebrew Bible, or Torah, or Torah, including the descendants of Noah's son Shem. S-H-E-M, what we call today Semites. And as many of you know, the New Testament was first written in the common dialect of the Greek language, known as Koine Greek, K-O-I-N-E, Koine Greek. And Koine Greek translates the word Hebrew as Aramaic. And so Aramaic is thought to have been the native language of Jesus the Christ. So our 18-year-old young man studying in the library at the Vatican in 1923 runs across these ancient writings. And he says he recognized several fragments in the texts that were either similar or identical to various pages from the Old and New Testaments and to the Dead Sea Scrolls and to the Avesta, A-V-E-S-T-A, the Avesta, which are the sacred texts of Zoroastrianism, which is the religion of the Iranian prophet Zoroaster, also known as Zarathustra. Some of you may be familiar with that. So our 18-year-old man is making all these textual connections from these ancient Hebrew and Aramaic writings that he says he found with all these other ancient religious sayings and passages that he's already familiar with from his studies. So that's one piece. That's one dot. Now let us travel about 80 miles south of Rome to a rocky hilltop in the town of Cassino. C-A-S-S-I-N-O, Casino, where high atop that hill sits an historic abbey or church, which is the first monastery established by St. Benedict of Nursia, N-U-R-S-I-A, Nursia. This was the first monastery established by St. Benedict of Nursia in A.D. 529. We know this group today as the Benedictine Order, St. Benedict of Nursia, the Benedictine Order. And that church monastery complex is today known as Monte Cassino, M-O-N-T-E, Monte, C-A-S-S-I-N-O, Cassino, Monte Cassino. Now, way back in antiquity, around the 11th century, the monks of that abbey were charged with caring for many of the town's medical patients, the sick among them. So in their ongoing quest for new knowledge, the brother monks began buying lots of medical and other books by Greek and Roman and Islamic and Egyptian and European and Jewish and Oriental authors so that they could bring new knowledge into the library there at Monte Cassino. And it wasn't long before this particular library became one of the most famous repositories of knowledge in Old World Europe. There were about 200 Benedictine monks there at that time, and it was the job of many of them to translate and transcribe into Latin many of the precious and rare and sacred manuscripts they possessed in the library. And so it is in the scriptorium, which is the writing room of this Benedictine Monastery, Monte Cassino, located on a hilltop just outside of Rome, that our 18-year-old says he found yet another original Hebrew text. And he eventually translated these Hebrew and Aramaic texts and compiled them into a book that he called The Essene Gospel of Peace. The Essene Gospel of Peace, which was first published in 1936 by Edmund 
Bordeaux Sekeli. E D M O N D Edmund Bordeaux B O R D E A U X Sekeli or Zekeli S Z E K E L Y Edmund Bordeaux Zekeli who was a Hungarian born philologist you ever heard that word before philologist P H I L O L O G I S T or an expert in ancient languages he was also a philosopher and a psychologist and he was into natural living and bought this place out in California later in life and experimented with herbs and growing natural plants and macrobiotic eating and all of that. Edmund Bordeaux Zichelli is the author of the Essene Gospel of Peace books, and there are four volumes or four books that make up the Essene Gospel of Peace collection. I must tell you, brothers and sisters, that both the Vatican and the National Library of Vienna denied the existence of the original manuscripts that Edmund Bordeaux Zichelli says he found. In fact, the Vatican also denied that Zichelli had ever even been admitted to the Vatican archives in 1923. And as for the manuscript Zichelli says he found at the Hilltop Abbey, well, history shows us that Monte Cassino was destroyed in World War II, which occurred between the years of 1939 to 1945. Now, it has since been rebuilt, but of course, no one can now confirm that those manuscripts ever existed in that monastery. So the Essene Gospel of Peace books are thought by some mainstream scholars, and you should know this, to be inauthentic forgeries of the work of the Essenes. Well, who were the Essenes? E-S-S-E-N-E-S, the Essenes. Those of you familiar with the 1946 and 1947 and 1956 Dead Sea Scrolls, which were found in the Qumran Caves in the Judean Desert near the Salt Lake called the Dead Sea, which is bordered by modern-day Jordan and Israel and Palestine. Many of those scrolls are thought to have been written by the Essenes who were one of three prominent Jewish religious sects, S-E-C-T-S, sects that were active on the scene from the 2nd century BCE to the 1st century AD. The other two groups were written about extensively in the Bible, and you will recognize their names as the Pharisees and the Sadducees. They're all through the Bible. The Essenes are not mentioned in the Bible. So the discovery in 1946 and 1947 and 1956 of these writings, the Dead Sea Scrolls and the Caves of Qumran, are believed to be the written legacy of this cloistered religious community. That's why they weren't mentioned in the Bible, because they were cloistered. Now, when I first came to consciousness, Consciousness, as they say, and began to awaken spiritually and became exposed to these teachings, which are considered part of the Apocrypha, A-P-O-C-R-Y-P-H-A, the Apocrypha. And Apocrypha are works of unknown authorship or of doubtful origin. Many of the books that didn't make it into the canonical Catholic Bible were considered Apocrypha, works of unknown authorship or of doubtful origin. So at the Council of Nicaea and other places, they did not include those as they were arguing and debating doctrine. <laughs> 